Hello, I'm Sneha Koshi. A big story that's emerging. Dozens of United States are suing Meta platforms. Dozens of states from the United States of America are suing the Meta platforms and its Instagram unit, accusing them of contributing to a youth mental health crisis through the addictive nature of their social media platforms. Now, let's just try and break this down to what really it is. The allegations are revolving around algorithms that they claim have been made in such a way, have been designed in such a way to have children hooked on to toxic and bad content. These are cases that are emerging from several states in the United States. Research has shown that young people use young people's use of meta social media platforms is associated with depression, anxiety, insomnia, interference with education and daily life, according to the complaint. But this is just one aspect of it. Let's just try and understand what really is happening in the United States. It may be just in some states of the United States, but has huge ramifications across the world. I'm being joined by Sri Srinivasan, who is the CEO for Digi Mentors. The former chief digital office of New York and is in know how of a lot of these things that are emerging. Thank you very much for joining us, Mr. Sri Srinivasan. Now, firstly, as I come to you, let me just try and understand what is it that is right now happening in the United States. Some very scathing action allegations that are emerging from there against Meta that are going to have global ramifications. Well, there is a huge mental health crisis in the United States and worldwide, but severe mental health issues that can be attributed in part to this device and how people are using it. You know, in India, how addicted all of how so many people are, millions and millions of people using it every day, nonstop. Well, kids in particular are especially vulnerable to the problems that are generated by your phone and the social media platforms have, are very much to blame and many of us have been complaining for years about this so what you're seeing now is this action being taken what it will mean down the road where you know will they settle or will they make major changes meta has already said they've instituted other, you know 30 different efforts to help with the problem but the basic problem is how it's made to be contagious, to be addictive, to share the worst information gets the most traffic, the most response. You know, Sri Srinivasan, it, this is so warped at so many levels. You know, the guidelines across by pediatricians and doctors say don't get children to use social media, mobile devices and all, screen time per se till they are two years. That's a guideline. But children as young as few months are being exposed to screen devices, videos on various social media platforms and all the way till they are in their school. So much of their assignments are around all of these things. This literally is a parallel universe that has been created for children to feed on from entertainment to education. Now, these allegations, you know, break this down for us. What does it mean when you say an algorithm is being designed to hook children to toxic content? This is, this is so difficult to understand. One of the ways to understand this issue is to know that the people who work in Silicon Valley, the people who know the algorithms, who know these machines best, they discourage their children from using their machines and using these tools as much as possible. That's the first clue. The second is the fact that anytime people uh, raise these issues with Meta, with Twitter, with any of the other platforms, they're always saying, we're doing our best. It's the user's fault and how they're using it. We also know that even if we all wanted to try and reduce the screen time of our children, you know that during lockdown, we had no choice. So many families had no choice where everything moved online. So when you add all of that up, that becomes the problem. But one of the ways we understand this issue is to see how the notifications were designed and tested. Everything on your screen that happens 
every little icon, the colors, the numbers, the notifications, all of it is engineered to have maximum impact and maximum addiction. And one of the things I tell people is to try and turn off notifications on your phone and you will see, you will use it less. There's also a way to make your screen black and white as an experiment. A few hours a day, if you do it, that will right. help. Coming Mr. Down this right, Mr. Shinivas, I know we're totally up. I mean, this is just the beginning and there's so much to understand about this. We're running short of time, but one last question. In the United States, which the states, so many states now suing the meta, what really does this mean? What is next? So now there will be the process of what's called discovery, where we will be able to learn what is the engineering behind the algorithm, because that will come out unless Meta settles and settles a case and pays a huge fine. But you know, they have unlimited resources, so they right. will not be worried about the money part. It's will there be more regulation? They themselves have said they welcome regulation, but they know that governments are right. terrible at regulating these. Right. Thank you very much for joining us. It's just such a short notice. Huge things to understand about this. We're totally out of time on this. Thank you, Mr. Srinivasan, for joining us on this. Thank you. And Prime Minister Narendra Modi at the Dashera celebrations in Delhi's Ram Leela Maidan in Dwarka addressed the gathering from the Ram Leela performance. He touched upon the Ram Temple in Ayodhya saying that we are fortunate to see its construction after a long wait and just a few months are left. He also hit out at the opposition in the election season. He said some people are trying to divide the country on caste lines. The opposition has been pushing for a caste census. आज हमें सौभाग्य मिला है कि हम भगवान राम का भव्यतम मंदिर बनता देख पा रहे हैं और अयोध्या की अगली रामनवमी अगली रामनवमी पर रामलला के मंदिर में गुंजा हर स्वर पूरे विश्व को हर्षित करने वाला है and even Sonia Gandhi, Chief Minister Kejriwal were among the political leaders who attended the Shera festivities in the national capital. You had Arvind Kejriwal who was at the Love Kush Ram Leela. Um, these are the visuals right in front of you. And in Maharashtra, it's been a battle of rival factions for the Dashera. It's been Sena versus Sena, while one faction has called the other Ravan. Going up, that is um, the Eknath faction, the Eknath Shinde faction of Sena group has called Uddhav Thakre's faction or Uddhav Thakre. The Ravan who did not bring forth or did not make public his desire to become the chief minister. Uddhav Thakre hit out at Shinde and his camp saying that no one, no less than General Dyer. Uddhav Thakre ki rally ko shakti pradarshan ke taur par dekha ja raha tha, lekin agar bote taur par is rally ki badi headline ki agar baat ki jaye to headline ye hai ki Uddhav Thakre ne band se kare karta ho ko aur khas taur se Shivsani ko ko sambodit karte ho kaha ki 2024 ka jo Lok Sabha ka chunaav hone ja raha hai, usme mili juli sarkar ve banaye kyunki mili juli sarkar desh ko zada majbuti pradan karti hai. PV Narasimha Rao aur Manmohan Singh jaise pradhan mantriyo ka unhone hawala dete ho kaha ki mili juli sarkar ने देश को हमेशा मजबूत किया है एक पार्टी की सरकार का जो राज है वो पिछले दस सालों से देखा है और इस राज में कहीं ना कहीं जो विपक्ष है उनको दबाने की कोशिश हो रही थी इसीलिए एक आह्वान उद्धव ठाकरे की तरफ से यहां पर किया गया है और दूसरी बात अगर देखी जाए तो इस रैली में मुख्य तौर पर एक शिंदे पर भी जमकर सरकार ने उद्धव ठाकरे की तरफ से तीर चलाए गए और इतना ही नहीं तो पीएम मोदी को भी घेरने की कोशिश की जब से शिवसेना दो पार्टी हो चुकी है यानी कि एक नाथ शिंदे ने बगावत कर जब से बीजेपी के साथ दामन थान कर सरकार बना लिया तब से शिवसेना दो पार्टी हो चुकी है और अब जो है कि दशहरा का पर्व मुंबई में एक तरह से राजनीतिक शक्ति प्रदर्शन का एक पर्व बन गया है एक तरफ उद्धव ठाकरे शिवाजी पार्क पर दशहरा सम्मेलन का आयोजन करते हैं तो दूसरी तरफ एक शिंदे ने आज यहाँ आजाद मैदान पर 
अपना दशहरा सम्मेलन आयोजित करके शक्ति प्रदर्शन किया और लाखों की संख्या में बता रहे हैं लाख के ऊपर कम से कम लोग यहाँ पर उन्हें सुनने के सुनने के लिए आए और यहीं से एक नाथ शिंदे ने उद्धव ठाकरे पर निशाना साधा और उन्होंने कहा कि वो उनके मन में जो होता है वो चेहरे पर नहीं दिखाते हैं वो साधु बन के रहते हैं लेकिन वो उनका जो काम है वो एक तरह से जो है कि चेहरे पर नहीं आता है मराठा आरक्षण पर जिसमें पेच फंसा हुआ है जिसमें सरकार ठीक से जवाब देते नहीं बन पा रहा है उस पर भी एक नाथ शिंदे ने हालांकि बात रखी और उन्होंने फिर से कहा कि मैं एक साधारण सामान्य मराठा परिवार से हूं और मैं मराठा परिवार की जो दिक्कत है उसको समझता हूं और मैं मराठा आरक्षण लेकर और लाकर दूंगा ये भी उन्होंने कहा हालांकि उन्होंने ये भी कहा कि जो समिति है उस पर चौबीस घंटा काम कर रही है सिक्योरिटी पिटिशन भी अदालत में है और मैं कोशिश ये कर रहा हूँ कि जो आरक्षण है वो टिका रहे ऐसा आरक्षण देने की कोशिश कर रहा हूँ इसीलिए उन्होंने ये भी कहा कि मेरे शरीर का एक एक खून का कतरा भी जब तक है तब तक मैं आरक्षण के लिए ही काम करते रहूंगा मराठा समाज के और साथ ही उन्होंने अब विरोधी पार्टियों पर भी बैंक कसा कि बाकी जो पार्टियां हैं वो अलग अलग जाति भेद करके इस पूरे मामले को एक जातिगत मसला बनाना चाहती हैं लेकिन वो मराठा आरक्षण लोगों को ला कर देंगे And Information Technology Minister Ashwini Vaishnav has written to BJP MP Nishikant Dubey over the alleged parliamentary login sharing of Trinamool Congress MP Mawa Moitra and said the matter is of grave importance. The National Informatics Centre, he said, will cooperate with the Parliamentary Ethics Committee to investigate the matter. Meanwhile, Mawa Moitra has hit back on social media saying she is amused by the minister's response. Thirty-six hours before the Ethics Committee of Parliament will meet, uh, where they will be recording evidence that will be provided by BJP leader Nishikant Dubey and advocate Jay Dehadri. The war of words has intensified with Mahua Moitra coming out, all guns blazing, saying that why is there no counter probe against uh, the MP who questioned her, which is Nishikant Dubey. This coming at a time when uh, the IT Minister Ashwini Vaishnav has responded to Nishikant Dubey. letter in which he had said that why are mahua moitra's uh, uh, login id and password not being investigated because he said that it was being misused by uh, darshan hiranandani for posting questions on behalf of the mp because he wanted to target business group uh, uh, gautam adani's business group that is adani group in fact uh, ashwini vaishnav in his letter uh, to nishikant dube has said that the issue raised in your letter are und undoubtedly of great a uh, grave concern and the subject matter will be taken up uh, by the ethics committee uh, he also says that nic which stands for national informatics uh, center will be uh, responding to any instructions that will be given to them from the lok sabha secretariat and they will be fully cooperating with the ethics committee of parliament which is investigating it now it remains to be seen what next in this entire investigation remember there is a petition which is before the central bureau of investigation which is yet to be uh, taken to any uh, direction because uh, similar to what happened in 2005 first uh, it was uh, the lok sabha committee which was under pavan kumar bansal which investigated the role of various mps which then submitted its report to the parliament and then the parliament i expelled those 11 mps who were seen in that sting operation of cash for questions now um, in this particular case also uh, the cbi is waiting for uh, for an instruction to come uh, from the lok sabha uh, because this is in the domain of privileges that mps enjoy um, remember there has been also a movement which has happened with and she can do be appear uh, you know uh, 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 sending a letter to the lokpal as well uh, so it remains to be seen what really plays out on 26th now when the ethics committee of uh, parliament will have its first hearing it's time for a short break on the other side all the latest Welcome back. Now, a key body of the United Nations, a key agency of the United Nations, has actually gone ahead and said that they need fuel as soon as possible on immediate basis for Gaza relief operations to continue. And uh, Israeli Prime Minister has called off the meeting with United United Nations Secretary General after the United Secretary General's remark, which said. Hamas attacks have not happened in a vacuum. 
It is important to also recognize the attacks by Hamas did not happen in a vacuum. The Palestinian people have been subjected to 56 years of suffocating occupation. They have seen their land steadily devoured by settlements and plagued by violence, their economy stifled, their people displaced, and their homes demolished. Their hopes for a political solution to their plight have been vanishing. But the grievances of the Palestinian people cannot justify the appalling attacks by Hamas, and those appalling attacks cannot justify the collective punishment of the Palestinian people. Now, two Israeli hostages that were held by Hamas have been released. But Israel has also tweeted a warning saying if you want to live in peace for people in Gaza particularly, go ahead and give us all the details you know of any of the hostages that you may be knowing about. Let's see what the background really has been. Eighty-five year old Yoshevet Lifshitz says Shalom as she is being released from Hamas captivity. Lifshitz and another elderly Israeli woman, Nurit Cooper, were released by Hamas to the International Red Cross. Two twenty people have been taken hostage by Hamas on October seventh following a brutal attack on Israel that has killed at least fourteen hundred Israelis. My mom is saying that she was taken on the back of a motorbike with her body, uh, with her legs on one side and her heart on another side. Evil. That she was taken through the plowed fields with a man in front on one side and a man behind her. And that while she was doing, being taken, she was hit by uh, sticks by Shabab. Yeah, Shabab people. Reports said that a group of 50 hostages were also likely to be released, but other reports contradict this claim, saying negotiations hit a roadblock over Hamas's demand that Israel should allow fuel deliveries into Gaza. Adding to Israel's diplomatic arsenal and Western pressure on Hamas, French President Emmanuel Macron landed in Tel Aviv today. Macron said France stands shoulder to shoulder with Israel. Macron's visit comes just days after U.S. President Biden's high-profile Israel tour. I think this is our duty to fight against these terrorist groups. Without any confusion, without, I would say, enlarging this conflict. If Hamas loses and is defeated, then the forces of civilization win. That is why this battle is not merely our own. It's Europe's battle. It's America's battle. Uh, it's civilization's battle. As world leaders scramble to find a solution to the Israel-Hamas conflict, there are fears of different fronts opening. U.S. has now accused Iran of actively facilitating attacks on U.S. bases in the Middle East. We know Iran continues to support Hamas and Hezbollah. And we know that Iran is closely monitoring these events and in some cases actively facilitating these attacks and spurring on others who may want to exploit the conflict for their own good or for that of Iran. Iran's foreign minister, on the other hand, says the U.S. is expanding the war. Already the deadliest of the five wars fought between Israel and Hamas with thousands killed, an emergency UN General Assembly special session on October 26th may shed some light on the future of this conflict. With Vishal Vivek, Bureau Report, NDTV. That's all we have for you in this bulletin. Thank you for watching.